And welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube for some Vladimir Tarek. That's right, we're going to try these two champions that just recently got buffed. Two champions that I really like to play. Um, overall, probably the best Tarek deck will be without Vladimir and probably the best Vladimir deck will be without Tarek. But we're going to start by playing um, both of them together in the same deck to really try them both out at the same time. All right. Um, and so, you know, like tomorrow and in, in the coming days, we'll be playing different Tarek decks, we'll be playing different Vladimir decks, stuff like that. I guess that's that's the point that I was trying to get to. All right, but we're going to start with this. So now Tarek has three power, so that's the change. Uh, we just added an additional power to Tarek in, in uh, both sectors. So, you know, being a 3-4 means it's just going to attack for that little bit extra damage, and we'll be able to uh, trade. It will be a better blocker. Like on defense, he'll be able to block, you know, like two threes or three threes and be able to eat them up. Um, so that's a, a nice improvement for Tarek. And Vladimir um, levels up a little easier, only takes five. It used to take six to, su to survive to level up Vladimir. Levels up a little easier. And that's big because leveled up Vladimir is awesome with the regeneration being a really big body with regeneration. So that's that's honestly a pretty big, pretty big change uh, to improve Vladimir. But then also uh, you now get to choose which uh, of your allies that you want to deal one damage to and drain, you know, drain the, or I guess deal, deal one to it and deal one to the enemy nexus. Because before, if you had a whole bunch of like two ones and you had Vladimir, your Vladimir was just going to kill your two ones or just anything with one health and you just couldn't do anything about it. So you couldn't attack with one health things and Vladimir and have your one health thing survive. You just couldn't do it. But now you you get you get that choice because it only does damage to the things on the right. So you can put your one health things on the left and then attack with Vladimir, and then attack with uh, your other stuff. It just gives you like that that ability to kind of pick and choose. You know, maybe you have like a five three that you don't really want their two one to be able to block. So you put your five three over on the left uh, with the Vladimir. It's really nice to just have that uh, have those options, and um, you know, give give you the ability to uh, play Vladimir how you want. That customization there, I like it. All right, so we're just going to put those with a whole bunch of really good cards and some good combat cards. You know, Might is awesome with Tarek, so we want all these Mites. Um, but then, you know, we'll have, like, Pale Cascade, another great card with Tarek. Transfusion gives you two targets for uh, Tarek's level up. Culling Strike's just a premium removal spell, one of the best removal spells in the game, especially right now with a lot of people playing Ezreal. Um, so that's, that's kind of our deck. All right, enough on it. Let's go ahead and play... Five games over in ranked. Do I have a Tarek Fizz deck? No, actually, I, I've never... For, we've played Tarek with a bunch of things, but we've never played Tarek with Fizz before. Uh, Morning Tea Time asks, anyone try gardening in the winter where it doesn't snow? What's a good winter seed? Um, I don't know the answer to that, but I think that that answer changes on the area, I think. You know, like, I don't think that that answer would be the same throughout different places in the world. So I think that's something you may need to ask somebody local. Could be wrong about that. See? This person knows what's up. They put Teemo with their Ezreal deck. Smart. So the Might's really good with the Tarek, and maybe I should just keep it, because it is good with the Tarek. Maybe I should have just kept it. But I, I mulliganed it basically because... Um, because their their goal is to like kill all my stuff. And Might doesn't... It doesn't help stop them kill my stuff. And it's not something that they have to kill. You know, all that kind of thing, stuff. So, decided to mulligan it. The world's a big place. Let's see all of it. Stop bragging if you can back it up. Ooh, that's gotta hurt. So I'm playing Mountain Goats over Iron Ballista so that I have two spell mana. So I can play uh, Tarek and still have two spell mana for these kind of cards. Their 4-3 can trade with my Mountain Goat, but I'm still drawing two cards. Excuse you. Watch 
Watch and learn. <laughs> Should go to my turn or nah. Firing. This is guiding touch here. Okay, no need guiding touch. So if I play Vladimir, I only have three mana. Or we could go Kato. I like Vladimir more than Kato. Alright, looks like that would not have really mattered too much. Yeah, four out of seven, so it's gonna be five, six. Dazzling. Never submit. Unyielding. I am the protector. So I gotta play that gem to level up the turret. I didn't want to play the gem, I wanted to save the mana for like these transfusions and stuff. And save the gem for like you know, a future turn with like playing that to copy over with Tarek or something. I, I didn't want to play the gem, but I think it's probably worth leveling up Tarek. One shot, all skill. Can't stop me. Explosives primed. I want them to kill my Legion Saboteur. Yeah, Tarek's looking pretty good right now. Decided not to open with their deck just basically being all spells. They want like you know like they they'd be able to you know respond to the open with this kind of stuff anyway. Um, I'm gonna let this happen. I'm not gonna calling strike Ezreal yet. I'm so good, I surprised myself. I will now now attack. Now having the Vladimir. Let's see. On regeneration. Obstacle, me gauntlet. I am Lord and Master. So I like where we're at. See them playing another Ezreal. Ezreal dying. And kind of a bunch of nonsense besides that. Who gets tossed? I don't care about the damage to my Nexus. And they do get to create a mystic shot with this. I basically, you know, decided do we, do we kill Funsmith? Do we kill Ezreal? Yeah, let's let's kill the Funsmith because then, you know, even like this does one damage, and then like Mystic Shot doesn't really kill stuff. Like a Mystic Shot might go, but they lose. Sounds dangerous. 
I'm in. Everything should be attacking. All right, there we go. GGs. Wanna know? Man, there's a lot of PNZ Shadow Isles controlled in tonight. Yeah, right now, Culling Strike is just the place to be. It sure feels like. Well, this Captain Farron could be big. I mean, it's an 8-8. It's going to be big, but... Y'all know what I mean. Yeah, Culling Meta definitely back. Which, you know, means like... Like, if people are playing it, like, I... I don't expect Ezreal to be meta in, like, a week from now. Like, a week from now, I don't expect people to be playing very much Ezreal. I think people will realize that Ezreal is not very good. Like, how does an Ezreal deck ever beat mid-range Frostbite? Like, I don't think it, I don't think they can. Mid-range Frostbite makes threats that are just too big. They're... They're just way too good against damage-based things. You have your Culling Strikes and Reckonings. Frostbites and all that kind of stuff. Mm, nice gotcha. Devotion to battle. I'm just gonna go with the Grenadier and save the three spell mana so that whenever I play Taric, we have Transfusion available. Instead of like play play Taric, they go Thermogenic Beam or something like that. They obviously can still have Thermogenic Beam, but I guess that would eat all this other mana too. Vi stands for violence. Shatter that. Unyielding. This vibe is going to be a problem. Okay, awesome. We got to kill Vi. Get closer to Vladimir level up. Even if they have, you know, Thermogenic Beam that takes out the Taric, but at least... Oh, they wouldn't even have that because I'd have the Guiding Touch. Aha. Right. That's pretty rude. I bring clarity. Hmm. Hmm. Dazzling. So I'm gonna, you know, draw something that we get to support, that we could have the guiding touch move on over, but obviously we didn't. Vlad's pretty good. Yeah, I like Vlad. That's pretty good. There's, you know, there's probably a better Vladimir deck than just this one. Uh, you know, maybe with Bilgewater. Uh, you know, I think we'll play some, like, Vladimir Swain with Bilgewater. That sounds pretty good for tomorrow. Um, we're just going with more Ruinations. Their deck usually plays like Karina and Ledros. So basically what I'm saying is like if I if I play Ballista, they could play Karina. They'd have to get four out of five to kill my Taric, but if they do, we're in a lot of trouble. Instead, I could just attack for three and try to put them down to ten. And then, you know, have decimate, decimate, decimate. Now they can they can also heal from there. So it's that that's not a very good plan either. I kind yeah, I kinda wanna go with the Ballista. 
I think I do. I think I want to play Ballista. With, with having these Mites and everything, you know, they shouldn't have another Ruination because they would have played that last turn. They did. I don't think they'll have four, four damn, four mana, fast speed, kill a Taric. Considering that Grass the Undying was the card they just drew. Yeah, I couldn't Culling Strike Ballista because Ballista was a 4 3. I wish I could have. I would have. So they can't really just play their nine mana cards. Ledros and Karina, because they know that, you know, I have double decimate, and that could be eight damage. I'm only at 3 out of 7 for leveling up Tarek. Let me attack, please. Please let me attack. Let me attack. Do 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 do. I wish Tarek would still just have tough. Okay, well they they drew a gotcha off of that static shock. So much for <laughs> so much for calling strike being awesome we've talked about with the other uh, the other turns. Yeah, so much for that. I'd never keep my guests waiting. No, I mean they open attack open attack wasn't game for me. If I would have opened attack with the Tarek, they would have killed it. They played all the cards they played were fast speed. I assume you've come for me. They could have played those to kill the Tarek. Yeah, they drew Gotcha. I don't know if it was off the static. I didn't pay close enough attention to know if that Gotcha was off the static shock or off of their first draw step return. I don't know which one it was. But we also don't know, like, the other cards in their hand. They may have had something else in hand that would have killed me. Right, it, it was two mana, but it could have been their, their card drawn for turn. I didn't pay that close attention. Strike. Couldn't, calling Strike just couldn't do anything. We drew basically all of our Calling Strikes and Mites. The two worst cards in our deck in that matchup. Calling Strike and Might, we drew almost all of them. I think I'll keep the Calling Strike here. But I'm not, like, positive. Like, you know, it only kills one of the two champions, and the champion that it does kill, Lucian, it's... Um, you know, trading down on mana with Lucian. It doesn't kill Senna. So I'm not sure with the Culling Strike, but we're going to keep on. I am just all in on... Uh... I was going to get it! 
Alright, I'm just gonna attack here. I don't know, I'm a little worried about like playing Ballista and they do something weird and this Bark Beast is like a 3-3 that kills my Ballista. I want to have, like, I'm, I'm just gonna do the 3, now play the Ballista. Next turn, like, Culling Strike this Bark Beast. Right, like, I want I want the Bark Beast to trade with my Culling Strikes. I guess that's what I'm trying to say. I don't want the Bark Beast to trade with my Ballista. The good thing about them playing the Ephemeral Curse Keeper is that likely means no Blighted Caretaker in hand. As we know how uh, backbreaking Blighted Caretaker always is whenever you play it. There's a kill in the air. Don't get in my way. Okay, I won't. Burn away the shadows. Death doesn't scare me. Both still have five cards in hand. Both have like one of these things in play, so we're pretty even right now. We know one of their cards is Curse Keeper. My best play is Kato, but if I play Kato and they go Vile Feast on the Iron Ballista, suddenly it's not best play. I'm gonna just go with the Crescent Guardian. Cause I think that I, I'd rather have the Nightfall available for the Pale Cascade than Nightfall available for Crescent Guardian. Oh yeah, I don't. <laughs> yeah, I guess I guess I could have had the Grenadier block the four three instead of the uh, Bark Beast card that I have been frustrated with. So that was that was just the card they just drew, right? So they have another Curse Keeper in hand. Definitely mean Blighted Caretaker, but hopefully not. Please just please just never ever ever play Blighted Caretaker. Everyone's a god. It's definitely really considering going Culling Strike on the Curse Keeper to keep this from happening. Honestly, completely considering that. Yeah, so we know they have a, a Senna and I think another Curse Keeper. I guess I didn't quite see where that Curse Keeper came from, but I thought it came from the, the other side. That's why I, I didn't. Yeah, I know they played an Ephemeral Curse Keeper, but I think that they played a, a different Curse Keeper that was not in the, in the spot the other one should be. I think a withering whale would be pretty bad. I don't know about y'all. What time is it? I think with the one health units probably not the best time Making for Vladimir. I give you muscles. Stay back. So I can play one pill cascade. Now to four. I guess I'll just see what happens instead of just playing the Pell Cascade first. See if they have, okay, if they have you know, some kind of spell that I need to save from. Yeah, so that's that's the Curse Keeper they grabbed um, off the Stalking Shadows before. To draw a card. The guilty will bend. Sunway. Their 
There's a chill in the air. Who's for supper? Want blood? I'll show you some. See, I, I regret not playing the Pillcast K to try to keep the Kato alive. I regret that. I regret not blocking the 4 3 before. A couple of regrets here. Slow down, will you? It is me! But we're looking good. They only have one card. Relentless Pursuit? Yes. Perfect. This fight isn't over. All right, GG's. All right, two and one. So might it? Oh no, we found Tarek. <laughs> I say might is the kind of card that can steal games if we would find if we would have Tarek was what I was going to say. Um, so you know now I wish I we still had the might because they're gonna have like the little one ones blocking and everything, and especially keeping the Kato, Tarek support Kato, and put the might on Tarek. So then you have the might on Tarek, the might on Kato, and then Kato gives another might to something else. That's a way to do a lot of damage and win a race. Anything else? Isn't looking very good for us. Okay, we got the might back. We need to survive until turn six and have Tarek and Kato and something else survive that whole time too. Look sharp. Never submit. And we need to do some more damage on the way. So we'll trade three ones, but we get two damage in. And then, of course, our Terra gets to deal damage as well. So there we go. That's good. Probably going to need to cast a Culling Strike on something. All right, looks like we're playing it on a 1-1. One -one. They left me up. They, you know, kind of um, let me out of the hook not attacking with the other stuff, but I guess I guess it could have Transfusion go over and try to kill the Jinx with the 6 health thing here. But, oh, I guess the problem with playing the Culling Strike... Oh, I guess I couldn't play the Culling Strike, could I? Because now I can't Kato and Might. Right, I can Kato and Pill Cascade, but we needed a Kato and Might. To protect all. Man, I need... Wait, no, actually, wait, no, this, this works. I can... That's right, I don't have to play the Might. I can go Transfusion and Pill Cascade. Actually, never mind, we're good. We're good, we got him. I was just thinking of like casting the other Might, then how do I cast the other stuff, but never mind, we got him. We got him, Harvey. Watch your step. If they would have just not blocked and just taken the 12, we would have lost. Kinda need to do this first.
That should level up Tarek. Get an additional point in. Are you pretty excited about that win, Harvey? Harvey looks pretty excited about that one. That was a good win. Yes, it was. Yes, it was. That was a good win. How about that, puppy? Yeah. You, aren't you happy? They're so happy. That was a great win. All right, what we got? We got Shivana and Aurelian Soul. Probably ramping into some dragons. So we'll see if we can get a big board presence and kill them first. Um... Nothing wrong with the transfusion, but I want, you know, one drop, two drop, that kind of stuff. I want, like, Pale Cascade a little bit more than transfusion when we're going Taric. Alright, not the not the best time to have the one drop right there, but oh well. Alright, we're going to get another win, puppy. They're going to start playing Shivana next turn. So we'll go, you know, Ballista. Do get to keep our two spell mana for transfusion, so that's good. Do you see? Wow, I love it. Love it. So no Shivana. Break their spirits and their souls. What what's the matter? Why aren't we attacking? Don't worry. I am here. Oh, cool. Glad you're here. To protect all unyielding. So I want to do this and make them tough first before the transfusion. So that the one damage doesn't matter. So that's two towards Vladimir level up with transfusion, and we're at three towards uh, Taric level up. Um, I guess I just pass. They challenge them both. Or do they just challenge one? Okay. Alright, Ballista, you're gonna die. I'm sorry. That's how it is. You did, a, you did good, though. You did good, Iron Ballista. Transfusion putting in work. Now we got Nightfall, Crescent Guardian. So we're at 5 out of 7. We'll make that 6. We'll make that 7. Never submit. There is nowhere left to go but up. 15? Wow, what a game. Good job, puppy. These gems are just for show. How'd you like that one, Harvey? Was that a good game too? Alright, another great win for Vladimir Tarek. 4-1. Look at that. Vladimir Tarek. And you know, like that that's like Two of the champions that people said were the very weakest in the game. They just got their new buff. Um, you know, each of them. And not like a huge, huge buff, but just a little bit. And it really, really paid dividends. Um, you know, the Tarek being three power was super important. So, like, Transfusion on the Tarek killed the 4-5 the dragon, right? Because then it was a 5-6 instead of a 4-6. So that was super important. Um, we didn't do a whole lot with Vladimir, to be honest. But we had... Vladimir was out there sometimes, and it was eaten then vengeances and stuff like that um vladimir did good though yeah vladimir did good did did its job all right so that's vladimir Tarek. um good video here good wins my kind of deck this is uh yeah i like this kind of deck more than the ezreal decks myself i like getting in there curving out playing some good combat tricks having some cool support stuff and uh winning and that's that's what we're doing here with vladimir Tarek. 
awesome deck. All right, those of y'all watching later on YouTube, hit that like button over there. And of course, feel free to leave those comments as well. I'd appreciate that. But thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you for the next video.